Hi chess friends, this is King's Executor showing you the birds opening in a blitz game. Actually it was a two minutes game and I wanna show you how you can play the bird intuitively if you know the opening ideas. And in this case it was one of these black setups which gave me a free hand. There is no tension in the center yet so I can play whatever I want and this is what I would play for example knight a3 here well you would say when I have the option why not play knight c3 instead well in this structure you see that black is really strong on the dark squares in conjunction with his pawns right and there's this knight coming to c6 so I wanna push c3 to kinda control the um, central squares and if I manage that, black is lacking uh, mobility in the center. And then I want to try to attack on the king's side. So this is why I'm trying to play c3. And knight a3 is justified, therefore. I can retreat the knight here or here. And I'm kind of dissuading black from activating his queen on this diagonal. Because of knight c4. So knight a3 is a good move in the birds opening usually. Knight c6, c3, bishop d7. Well, I played e4 here. Uh, knight h4 is another possibility. And after, say, a6 we can push f5 looks funny right of course uh, to take on f5 for black is bad that would weaken his king side and my knight would recapture if that pawn takes here the knight would recapture and uh, I would be attacking this bishop and after any move I can push e4 say b5 e4 and now I can look for play bishop g5 take off that knight and after this bishop recaptures I push my pawns on the dark squares and then I will have pawns here and here and uh, kinda locked in black bishop this is a nice theme not only for Blitz. I played this in one of my own games on this channel. Uh, I don't know which game it was. Well, you have to watch all of them, I guess, to find it. Um, so, knight h4 and f5 is possible. I played e4 immediately. Queen c7 and knight b5 doesn't bring get me anywhere. Because on queen b6 I, I cannot retreat here, I have to go back and this is why this is a bad move here I believe. So I played queen e1 with the idea h3, g5, queen out on this diagonal to g3 or h4. And I'm uh, of course contributing to e5 if it's good, I'm getting out of any pins. So queen e5, uh, queen e1 uh, one is a good move. e5 here. Yes. I'm not taking on e5 in such a position, I don't like that. That would just open up the d-file and let black attack my backwarded d-pawn here. And when I keep the tension, there is no backwarded weakness here. I rather let uh, black, black take on f4. Um, now that now that the pawn is pushed, actually, I see something here. The pawn is pushed, right? So I can play knight b5 in this position. Queen b8 would be answered by knight takes. So. In this position you see that knight b5 
works on knight b5 sorry on knight b5 the engine gives queen b8 as the only move to cover that uh, square and now we could push c4 get a grip on the light squares but this is actually not the way I wanna play I mean the plus side of this is that the queen has lost time it has to maneuver back here on the uh, dark squares to get out and this loses time but indirectly the bishop's diagonal is uh, mobile and active again because that pawn can be uh, taken out of the way of the bishop's rank so this is what you have to consider I don't like playing knight b5 if um, sorry I don't like playing knight b5 if that has to do with uh, playing c4 and stuff so the knight can come back that changes the structure I want to keep the structure so I play uh, knight h4 with the idea that if black takes on f4 I will recapture with the bishop activating my bishop the bishop is on a strong diagonal knight b5 is now a threat attacking queen and pawn and on knight e5 I can play rook d1 covering the pawn and on knight h5 bishop back now the bishop is out of the way of the rook here I don't have to uh, I can I can take it all the ba way back to the home square and then it will come out again at the right moment when I wanna attack the king side so this is the game position so if black takes on f4 I will recapture with the bishop I will not take on e5 b5 by my opponent it's a mistake I can take this mm, but again it was a two minute game I just played my plan very quickly I wanted to have um, this knight directed this way um, and this is the point I am I'm showing you this game though it is a two minute game and really not uh, a high quality game but the opening from the white perspective um, well of course if white takes b5 uh, he wa uh, wins it pawn for nothing but from the white perspective the moves here are all um, sensible, sensible and contributing to a plan a5 and this is why this game is instructive anyway b4 so this is thematic. White is pl uh, pushing on the king side. Black is pushing on the queen side. And um, from at this point, when you're ready to push your pawns, well, firstly h3 to be able to push g4, and then g5, and maybe even f6. So you can lock in that bishop. Is a good idea, but I think when the pawns land on that squares, this bishop is out of the king's side attack. Let's see what I mean. Uh, say we play bishop g5 here. And it would be even nicer if we would have a queen here or a rook on this file so the knight would be pinned but funnily enough um, the knight cannot retreat anyway my idea is to take black takes and then I can push my pawns the knight is protected here from th by the queen and I wanna push that uh, bishop back with my pawns and when my dark squared bishop is gone exchange for this important defensive knight then I can place my pawns on the dark squares and the bishop has done a job by taking off a defensive piece if black were to uh, deny that plan well that, I that is bad you can push f6 
bishop back and you can play bishop h6 any any time you want to gain that um to gain that qu um exchange if knight takes pawn okay black wins a pawn for the exchange and then you would uh go on trying to win here let's go back but even stronger is knight e3 with the it's it's a twisting suit because knight d5 is threatening and if knight d5 is allowed then knight e7 is threatening and that would be made if black couldn't take on that and then we can recapture and this rook <laughs> is uh, immobile and we when we have a pawn here we can take and win even the whole rook so knight e3 is a very very strong move bishop e6 to keep the knight of out of d5 well that rook doesn't run away does it so h3 and if uh, queen d7 here well the pawn on h3 cannot be taken because of the big threat knight e7 let's just see it again if takes well first the uh, after knight e7 that has to be taken of course it's check and now you see we're winning the rook for a pawn where is it okay here so that means that bishop takes knight would be forced pawn takes and the knight goes back do you see how black's pieces are totally immobile by only one mistake in in this um sorry after bishop g5 with this is not the game continuation this is just the idea this is what you have to play before you push your pawns bishop g5 and take off that knight and if black doesn't want to allow that well then you see how emo by a black a black gets and uh this is just terrible this is terrible now we can play bishop h6 finally after having uh, squeezed black more and for example bishop uh, queen e3 here being active on the dark squares if the knight ever moves um, we can win this pawn and um, yeah we can open up the queen side and uh or attack the black king whatever this is one normally so let's drop back this is what you have to get out of this to to get from this video bishop g5 in such a position before you push your pawns is very good i played h3 because it was a 2 minutes game <laughs> and i just uh, played by reflex and yeah. Rook AB8, G4. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And now he plays Knight E8. He sees the pawns coming up. But uh, yeah, you see how difficult it is to defend uh, such a position. It's easy for white to find the good moves, but it's not at all easy to find moves for um black say rook to d8 then g5 and if uh, well this is what i um, this is a sample line to show you that in this position <coughs> the bishop on c1 is out of the game right because of these pawns and this knight still helps and covers the mating square here and um well you can play bishop here and takes anyway but the bishop has no job here so this is why I told you beforehand to before that uh, pawns are pushed down the board you should exchange this bishop for the knight on f6 if possible so knight 
E8 and I just uh, put more pressure on with Queen G3 um, and now it's really difficult the engines would suggest that the game is equal but I don't think it is so especially it is not uh, easy from from a human point of view the engines give gives moves such as Queen A7 this is this is just nothing um, what should I say it doesn't contribute if you play G5 well um, you have to do something if Knight C7 this is again an engine move Knight E3 this is so strong and again an engine move but you see the engine accepts that these knight maneuvers over to the king side these are very strong and now the rating the assessment of white's position goes up and up so back to this position now uh, this is a two minute game again I have to stress this because now my opponent blunders terribly with f6 and I just uh, would win this pawn here so it pushes by and I can place my knight on f5 so this is just the fun part of it, okay? This is just the blitzing part of it. Uh, you see my... Uh, let's just drop back. I could have taken this way, but um, E takes F is stronger to open up the bishop's diagonal and at any moment bishop D5 check is killing. And knight E7, queen H4, double attack on the pawn, D5, and I took the pawn, um well this is absolutely crushing well this is a two minute game as i said so don't take it s too serious from this point of view just to show you how strong white's position is the best move here is uh actually bishop takes and now black is practically forced to get into that pin and now pawn takes and you see how terrible this is after king over here takes 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 and you see the king has to move and after <laughs> bishop c6 the king has no squares and the queen has to sacrifice on c6 so this is how strong white's position is so he blundered here of course this is a lost position anyway rook b2 bishop takes g7 that has to be taken by the queen or else mate on h7 check 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 this is of course just the entertainment part here um, and now I'm basically mating very uh, sadistically here yes okay so what do we have to get out of this game Again, if you have a free hand, play your plan, your king's side uh, pawn pushes. and But from this point on, you have to be precise. Bishop g5 is here, the plan move. h3, g5. And now I got my queen into the game, and from this position on, like basically, it's over for black. After f6 by black. But it's difficult anyway. If I get to push my pawns here and here, knight over to this squares, and the knight here can land vicious checks here. See, that uh, that would be checkmate if the bishop would have to drop back after f6 is pushed. So the knight maneuver. Knight maneuver a3 c2 e3. This is just part of the plan, and this is justified already in the sev at the seventh move here. Okay, I hope you liked the game. Just to show you the 
In, well, you can play another move instead of queen e1 here too. This was just my move, it was an intuitive move. It's a good move. And you can uh, just go through my ideas again. And you can play this way in a serious game as well. Thanks a lot. And please subscribe, comment and r rate the video if it's possible. For the time being it's not. <laughs> okay, thank you.